join. As always, we're Sensualist TV here. We can say whatever we want to whomever we want. Uh, tonight, I'm back with Mike, uh, my Maryland co-host. Uh, Steamboat Willie is not available again, and, and Al is getting rewarded for his hard work out there. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, there's a busy. lot of things we can talk about. Yeah, he's a very busy guy, very busy guy. Um, there's a lot of things we, we need to talk about or address. Um, the first is the obvious, the Hunter Biden situation. Um, everybody's talking about it. Um, they're hemming and hawing, public hearings, private hearings, behind closed doors. What are your thoughts on that, Mike? Oh, well, you know, it's all part of the show. I mean, uh, it, it was uh, fun. Actually, another, just to get off topic for a minute, kind of, is one of the Americans that was released in Israel Right, was a a daughter of a donor who bought his paintings. <laughs> so I was like, isn't that some shit? Yeah, and they let him go. Yeah, but I don't, I'll, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really too sure. I haven't heard too much. I've been tied up. I mean, you know, when it rains, it pours or right. whatever. I had a dishwasher breakdown, a wash machine breakdown, a vacuum breakdown, all in a week of Thanksgiving. Nice. And then my then my car windshield wouldn't go on one side. So it's been a heck of a week. Oh man, my apologies, sir. My apologies. Yeah, but he uh yeah. Well, <laughs> well I, yeah. What I find strange is 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 just a constant nonsense between both sides, right? We want him to testify, but he wants to testify publicly, but he doesn't want to do it behind closed doors. I understand part of the reason um, behind closed doors is because they can talk about everything behind closed doors, right? Um, and he can't hide right. anything. Yeah. If he does it in front of Congress, I think there's a time limit, right, for every person to ask him a question. I think five minutes per person. So it, so it limits. Usually, yeah, in the committee. Yeah, it limits the time that they can drill down on whatever he's talking about. Um Kind of like in The Godfather when they have Michael Corleone, you know, speaking to the Senate in a hearing, it gives them time to, to first of all, control the questions because you got a limited amount of time. Second of all, it's open to interpretation by the public, right, and the media, which I think is really the real reason they're doing it because they they know that CNN, MSNBC are all going to side with Biden no matter what happens, no matter what he says. So oh, kind of, of a public hearing so that, yep. the, you know, the media will give him positive endorsements. Oh, see, he's not so bad. He's not a criminal. Um, well, and I think that's why they don't want to be hitting those doors. But at some yeah, point. They're going to say, oh, he was an addict. Right. But but and at some point. remember things. At some point, regardless if he does it, let's say he does a public hearing now. At some point, there's going to he's going to have to go to closed door meetings with everybody because they're going to want to talk to him. Right. I mean, if they have enough evidence, they're yeah. going to, he's yeah. going to have to testify um, behind closed doors where they can ask him all the questions they want to ask him. Because again, I'm pretty sure the family's involved so they could dig deep into who's involved, yeah. how much the involvement was, how many of the government officials are involved in this mess? Because I'm sure there's plenty uh, involved in the right. cover-up. So uh, I think that's probably why his attorney wants to go public, um, just to get that favorable pat on the back from the media, uh, which he'll get. I mean, he, he's going to get it. Right? I, I mean, yeah, I'd like to see him charged with contempt of Congress if he don't do it, like they did with everybody else. I, I would love you know, you that. Want to show up, you got to subpoena. I, I would love that, and I think, again, I think they're playing the media at this point, so it forces the the GOP to to do it that way, um, which is really, when you think about it, there's so the, the DOJ is manipulating everything nowadays, and and we weaponize them, oh. right? No matter what anybody thinks. We have weaponized the DOJ. They're doing whatever they want, 
whenever they want, however they want, which is crazy yep. to me that we allow that, right? But yet, God forbid a Republican wins and they do the same thing, then, you know, people are going to complain, well, they're just attacking them because they, they weren't in charge before. It's the same nonsense back and forth. I think the American people are slowly waking up to all this nonsense. Um, I think that oh, yeah. they're over it. When you go to the market, you know, with everything that's going on with the economy, right? Um, the nonsense they put out a couple of days ago that Thanksgiving was cheaper this year than last year. Well, of course it was, right? We were still going through COVID and all that nonsense last year. But how much cheaper right. was it? It wasn't. And, and I use this example. I went to buy a loaf of bread the other day, four ninety nine for a loaf of bread, right? Four ninety nine for wow. a loaf of bread. How can you wow. tell me the economy is getting better when we're paying four ninety nine for a loaf of bread? Right. So yeah, I think the American people are slowly waking up. Um, I'm hoping they wake up for the primary and the general election because we definitely need a change in leadership. Uh, kind of like in the military, right? I don't know about law enforcement. The military, we had change of commands every two to three years, right? Command, yeah, you got to move on. that way for a while. Yeah, so yeah, we, we, we had we change of command. My acting chief, he had become the chief, but the county executive wanted to micromanage him. He said, I'm not mm. doing it. I'm out of here. So he was smart and a good guy. Well, and, and you know what? We need more people like him because, like, the the LAPD chief, that guy has no balls at all. He does whatever the city council tells him to do, how to do it, when to do it. And and it's and it, whether we believe it or not, it's a reflection of what the police officers think in the field, right? My hands are tied. There's no point. The chief is a political position. Um, I, I am definitely a proponent of changing the, the, the city charter for Los Angeles and having that chief position be a voted in position like a sheriff, right? Um, because I think that would be good. That would it, it would work, right? Because now they don't they don't they don't have to respond to politicians. They respond to us, the public, right? And and you know, takes the control away from the city I was council. On the police. When I was on Capitol Police, there mm -hmm. we, you know, being a new guy, I come out and I say, okay, I report to the, the chief. Well, that wasn't the place because I had 435 bosses. And <laughs> that was everybody in Congress. Right. And so that's why I decided after three years, I'm out of here because, you know, the staff members think they were, the shit didn't stink with them either. And, right. and I said, screw this. It, you know, when you have, yeah, they got to do that. You got too much, you know, too much minutia on top, right? And 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 not enough resources going to the field because that's where you belong, right? Kind of like think about salary. Like right? if you look at a lot of government jobs or even CEOs, they get most of the money on top, and then by the time it gets to the people that actually do the work, they're just getting peanuts, right? And this guy that's really not doing well, anything get gets all the money. Well, it's funny because out here, when I started, it was you know, my last department, it was $20,000 when I, I took a pay cut, but it was $20,000. Now they're paying $77,000, so $15,000 signing bonus. That's as wow. much as I was making when I left. Times definitely changed, Mike, right? Oh my and, God! And what, and, what, yeah. and what kind of department do we have now? Whether it's LAPD, whether it's the Capitol Police, right? What kind of quality are we getting for that kind of money? That that's what I want to know. You, all you got now is you got people who come to work for a paycheck and not the job. Yeah, they don't have have the heart. Well, we stripped them of everything, right? You know, you kind see of, that, and you just yeah. We, we strip people of, of everything. Um, and and again, to break them down, right? So they do what we say, when we say, how to and, and how to do everything, right? There's no individuality right? in people anymore. It's it's 
you're either this or you're that. You can't be anything else, uh, which is really a travesty. Right. Um, definitely a travesty. And, and again, and you know this, I'm, I'm not the biggest Trump fan, but that's why they're afraid of Trump, right? Because Trump is not going to yeah. align himself with really whether you're Republican or not or Democrat. If you don't agree with, with his philosophy, he's not going to side with you. He's just going to go bypass right. you. Um, and and right. I I like that individuality where you say, you know what? Yeah, I know what you're saying, but I don't agree with you. So I'm not doing that kind of attitude. Because um, that's what we need at this point. I'm going to do it the right way. Right. So. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Trump. It looks like you've seen all the all, all the people that were going to resign and not go up for elections next year. Yeah. I mean, there were like 20 or 30 of them, both houses. It was like, wow. I mean, this could be a big game changer if the American people yes, wake it, up. And I and, and again, I, I it look it sounds and it looks like most people are getting up and they're getting tired. A lot of it has to do with parents um, getting tired of the economy, getting tired of what's being taught in the schools, um, getting tired of all that nonsense, right? Um, so it, it's a lot to do with all that. But I think mainly is people are just tired. They're just tired of being abused. Um, you know, you would think. Think about this. I, I, I read this, and I don't know where I read it, but um, people need to make $11,000 more just to be at the same place they were last time. 11000 more a year. Right. And that's average nationwide. That doesn't, that doesn't, if California is probably more, right? Just to be at the same yeah. level you were. So people are tired of that and, and the abuse and the costs. Um, you know, milk, milk went up a buck um, in less than two months in California, right? Um, that's a lot to go up, right? Um, yogurt went up from, I think it was 170 to $3 a container, a 12-ounce container, right? That's expensive, right? When wow. you start adding that up, it, it gets to be expensive. And, yes, gas yep. is dropping in California. Um, I think we're close to under $5. Where are you guys at now? Wow, yeah, we're through about three oh three. Yeah, so I mean, I, I bought some yesterday for four fifty five, and I was super excited over that. So, um, you know, it, it, but people get tired. You can't keep taking their money, taking their money, taking their money, and and, and there's right. there's no. There, I mean, the, they said today that they're talking about increasing the interest rate again, right? Think about that. Uh, what the, what? That'll slow down inflation, but that's going to bring on a recession. And even Jamie Dimon said that today. He said, we're going to have a recession. Yeah. I know we're in one now. They don't want to admit it. But we're definitely going to hit a recession at this rate, especially if the interest rates go up again. Right. And, and it's a possibility. Is it going to happen? Yeah, look, look, I hope not. And, well, look at if you're trying to buy a house and you're a new home buyer. Right. How much the interest rate is up. When Trump was in, I refinanced my house for 30 years at 2%. Wow. So I, I'm, I'm paying less for a mortgage on a, on a house than you would be for renting an apartment, which is like 2000 Right. Right. And, you know, yeah. people, need, people need to start looking at those. And I think they are looking at all that stuff. Um, because it's it's affecting your income, it's affecting your your lifestyle, it's affecting the things that you can do and can't do anymore. Um, so right. you know, hopefully they'll come out and vote in droves this time around. And I'm not expecting you know a red wave like they talked about years past. I just want people to vote with common sense and, and choose the right person yeah. for that position, whether it's city council, whether it's mayor. Just choose the right person for your particular area so that there's some relief because if you look at what happened in San Francisco they were able to clean up the streets and put out all those Chinese flags in what 48 hours right right yeah. not very many American flags even though we're in the US but Newsom wanted to impress his buddy uh, the president of China um, but they cleaned that up right right away so you can't tell me that we don't yeah. have the assets to clean things up right 
we have the assets. We only want to use it when it's convenient for them, not us, uh, which is the sad part of it. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, they did what, that. I think we're down in San Diego, too, at one time. Yeah. When the president was going down there, they decided, it was up. you know, leave it the way it is. See the real America and what you've done to it. Right. And, and, I, and I know Newsom's in bed with the Chinese president. Um, you know, I know that he has a lot of that president's philosophies when it comes to leading. Um, and, and I and I hope that tomorrow right. he gets exposed by DeSantis. Um, you know, I don't think oh. he will. I think I think he's smarter than DeSantis. Um, I think he's going to he's going to come out looking like a knight in shining armor um, against DeSantis because DeSantis is a smart guy, but I think Newsom is a lot smarter than DeSantis. Yeah, but when you look at the records, compare them, you got one that's a lot better oh, no. tax, you know, even down the there. record. Yeah. The uh, record, the record, it, 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 you're right about the record. My concern is that people buy into his car salesman, slicky boy nonsense because he's, he's can very, he can articulate a good argument. And if you don't know anything about Newsom, you'd be like, huh, that guy seems like a smart guy, right? Um, right. So yeah, what I'm hoping yeah, for I mean, is he's a smooth talker. Good, yep, good looking guy. Yeah, he and he'll get out there and he'll be a, a talker and. But uh, when Hannity, Hannity, I think, is just going to moderate and not, not try to go either way on it. So right. it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. Me too. Actually, I'm going to watch that debate, watching that one. I think there will be, I think there will be more people watching that debate than there will the regular Republican debates. Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. And, and I'm really I'm hoping for that. Because I want to make sure the American people get exposed to who Newsom truly is. Because I know that at the end of the day, right. whether it's this election cycle or the next one, he's going to run for president. So we need to make sure that he gets exposed yeah. publicly on what he really is and what he's really done to the state of California. I mean, we, you know, it, yeah, I mean, he is of China, too. He went over there. Why the hell would he go there? What's his business over there? Well, he, he's not running the country. He he is. He's like, in bed with the Chinese. He's, in bed, he's just in bed with them. Um, we have the I think the third or fourth largest economy in the world. I hear most of the ports. Out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, most of the ports out in California are owned by the Chinese. Yep. Well, what isn't owned by the Chinese, right? At this point, way too much. Surprise! When I did things on on the internet just to see what was they were the Chinese were connected with, there wasn't a thing I could point out that they weren't. Yeah, it, it's I mean it's we really might sad that, China. We, that we've allowed all this to happen, um, but there's still hope. There's still that light at the end of the tunnel that I think the American people are starting to see that you know. Biden is not the guy who should be president, number one. Um, people like Newsom or Pelosi should not be right. reelected, right? We need to find people with common sense approach to, to politics, dealing with issues. Uh, I was on a podcast Monday, and we talked about this, me and this the, the guy interviewing me, Alex. And I don't want to elect somebody that doesn't know what's happening in my district or my city, right? We need to have open right. lines of communication with our elected officials. They need to come talk to us, whether it's Zoom or town hall meetings. They need to get off their ass in the puzzle palace and come down and say, hey, constituents, tell me what you, what is important to you right now. What's happening? What can I help you with, right? And then take that to whether it's the city office, the county office, the state offices, the federal government saying my constituents right. have concerns about this, right? 
I know sometimes constituents get caught up on yeah. my streets are cracked, right? And, and I always say you need to prioritize what's really important. And and those are the issues that the public servants need to take on for their constituents, not what they think needs to change. Exactly. Right. And, and but we need to hold them accountable for that. We don't do a good job. We like to bring people in. I'll use shifty shift. Right. I know that most people that I come in contact with dislike that man with a passion. But yet they invite that oh, jerk yeah. off to our parades, shake his hands and takes pictures with him. Right. So I, I don't want to don't be a hypocrite. If the guy's not doing his job, let's not invite yeah, him. How can he, how, and how can he be at your praise when he's a Maryland resident? Right. Well, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, it's just that we, for whatever reason, we we think politicians are gods or superior beings, right? And they're not. They're not. They're just yeah. like us. But we've given them so much power that they think they are, right? And they think they're freaking special, and they're not special, right? Well, you got to listen to what they say. Take a legal pad with you, you know. And if somebody says, "Hey, I'm concerned about this," maybe jot it down, and you know, you have something to work off of, you know, so you can come up with a solution to maybe what their issues are, not a plan, because no. plans Absolutely. don't always work. No, and and, yeah. and talk to them, like I know. Look, I know what it, c Congress, right? They're not up there every day working their asses off, right? They go up there to vote for shit, and they're able to come right. back. They're, the reason the Congress votes the way they vote is so they can vote on issues and then go back to their constituents, right? But I can tell you that 90% don't come back. They stay their happy ass wherever oh, they're right. at because they don't want to. they don't want to come talk to us. They don't want to tell us what's really going on. Right. And that's our fault because we've allowed it. We've allowed public servants and politicians to do whatever they want to do when they want to do it. We don't demand anything. Think about this. In law enforcement, if you didn't do your job, your chief would be up your butt. Right. If you made a mistake. Right. Your chief right. would be on you. And the military was the same way. If we screwed up, somebody had to yeah. had, had to answer for it. And here we don't. We invite you to a Christmas party, Veterans Day parade. Fourth of July parade. I might not like you, but I'm still going to invite yeah. you, right? And, and and that needs to stop, right? We need. There's got to be respect for the American yeah. people and respect for the republic by everyone, not just the people. By everyone, and that comes with leadership. Because like when I was a, when I I was a, an acting sergeant, and I said, okay, I, I'm I'm in a leadership position. I says. I would take my guys and say, look, if you want to go to canine or SWAT or wherever, I will help you get there, providing that every day when you go out, you write me three pieces of paper. I don't care if it's a traffic ticket or a repair order, a, you know, a field stop or whatever. Give me three pieces of paper. And over, you know, you figure over 20 days or so that they may work, that's going to add up when you got eight or it's right. leadership and they don't they're not they're not leaders they're they're just talking heads well and you know i'll give you an example like the tony portentino's other way he's a senator here in california he, he was an actor right and he went from acting to politics right the mayor of burbank he was a comedian and an actor became a mayor right laura friedman the assemblyman in my district assembly person she was an actress, became an assembly person, right? Got into politics, right? Um, a lot of attorneys get into politics, right? We, we, we kind of gotten away from choosing somebody for what they could truly do, for their common sense approach to day-to-day -day life, right? Because whether it's local, whether it's city, right. whether it's county, whether it's federal, whether it's state, you've got to have a common sense approach to things. And if you don't, then you're going to have a, the... Thirty-three trillion dollar debt we have, right? That we we can't fix. Right? You're going to have places like California, where people can't afford to live in a state that could probably be the number two economy in the world 
if we just took advantage of what we have, but we don't, right? We want to play this green energy nonsense. Right. We don't have an infrastructure for it, but let's bring it in anyway, right? Um, we're not going to have enough places to charge vehicles. Um, it, it's all nonsense, and people need to stand and up and if, say enough is if enough. They lowered, and if they lowered your taxes in California, you would have more people spending money on things that they may need. They're still going to go to the state for their state taxes. You know, you're, you're doing it that way instead of punishing them by giving them higher taxes on the state level. Well, it's funny. Newsom had had a via telephone. He had a, a kind of letting letting reporters ask him questions, and he's blaming the homeless problem on on prior leadership, right, in California. <laughs> um, he forgets that he was a mayor of San Francisco, and he's the reason San Francisco is the way it is today. Right? Mm -hmm. He is the reason why right. we're this. There's no accountability. And he even said it. He says there's no accountability for you know local officials. Well, that's on you, Governor. If you're giving money and you're not having people account where that money's going, right? And part of the problem is they need to wake up because part of the problem is the nonprofits that they support, right? Especially the homeless nonprofits. I would love to know what the staff is getting paid on all these nonprofits to run them. Because oh, yeah. I can pretty much guarantee that it's about 70, 80 percent of the money goes to staffing instead of the homeless people. Right. And 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 do we have oh, a no homeless doubt. problem yep. in California? Yeah, we have a homeless problem. We also Hell have a drug yeah. problem. We also have mental issues, right? So you can pour money into housing all freaking day. It's not going to resolve the issue, right? Because the issue is not just homeless. No. Nope. Right. If the issue was just homeless, we could fix that easily. But it's not that. It's drugs. It's mental issues. And if we don't address that, I don't care how much yeah. money you pour into the system. It's not going to help. It's not going to help. Yeah. Right. I mean, you need to build a facility to, to start taking care of those people that are in those situations to help them out to better themselves, to, uh, you know, want to go out and get it have a place to take a shower, you know, you've got you've got all these places like Salvation Army, Goodwill, wherever that can help them out with clothing, you know, and stuff like that. And but, you but you got to have a base. But but you're right and it's funny you mentioned Goodwill. Um they're not going to help anybody anymore because what they're doing is they're selling everything, right? Whatever whatever they get, right. they sell, right? So it's no longer about helping people. It's about that nonprofit helping itself instead of the people, which is really the problem. The pro and, and, you know, this goes back to Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is the one that shut down the mental institutions and all the hospitals. So this is something that he did, right, for maybe to cut costs, who knows. Um, but we need him back. We need him back. It, it's like jails, right? People right. talk about jails. So, you know, in a perfect world, if I was running a jail, I'd want a jail. I also want drug rehab clinic in the jail. And I also want a mental facility in the jail. People to help right. these guys get straight. You you can't put somebody in jail yep. if they have a mental issue. They're just going to do it all over again. Right. If they have a drug issue and we don't help that, that drug issue, they're going to go back to drugs and commit a crime again. Kind of the same thing with homeless people. If it's a mental issue and we don't address it, they're gonna. It's the problem will just continue, continue, continue. So we we gotta yeah, we gotta draw the line idea. somewhere and say enough is enough. We're not gonna do it that way anymore. We need to build more jails. We do. I don't give a shit what Governor Newsom says. We need to put people in jail for committing crime. I but agree. we need to have we need to have the facility well, within the jail and yet, to get these guys out. All right. And a lot of so, these jails don't are not capacity because they let them all out for right, and they back out doing the same thing again. It's that revolving door, you know. But it's funny jail, because we, 
local jail for about a year. But it's funny because they have and the people the, believing. After that, you go to prison. Right. And and I, I truly believe this. There is some people that we can help, right? They're, we're not going to help everybody. I'm not naive enough for, uh, to believe that. We, we can help a lot of people by addressing the issue, right? right? So they committed a crime. Why did they, we need to find out why they committed a crime. Is it because they have a mental disability, mental, mental issue, or was it a drug issue, or they're just a criminal? And if they're just a criminal, lock their ass up, right? But if, if we find out with a right. professional that they have a mental issue, maybe they're bipolar, maybe they have a problem, then let's address that issue while they're in jail, give them therapy and counseling before releasing them, and not releasing them early, right? Give them some counseling, and then maybe when they get out, they won't commit a crime. And if it's a drug issue, then let's clean them up. Because right. I know a few people that were drug addicts that cleaned up their act, and they're very successful now. So if they get help, there's a good chance that they won't commit a crime again. Right. And I truly believe that. But if and we they keep need, just they need to up, And they need to age limits that they have because D.C. has got, I think they were saying, 900 car thefts and carjackings this year. And you know how wow. small D.C. is. Yeah. I mean, it's not even 10 miles by 10 miles. And you, I mean, when I was working the streets, it was if you were seven years old or younger, you, you weren't charged with the crime. Now they bumped it up to if you're 13 years old, then you steal a car, you can't be committed with a crime. But if you do murder or something in age, you can be charged as an adult. They need to, the juvenile system's out of control. Well, it's out of control here in California, too. It, it just it, because we've gotten to this point yeah. that it, it's all about everybody's feelings and emotions and color of their skin, their sexuality, yeah. and not about what they're doing that's wrong, right? Um, I, I laugh because now, and, and back to Trump, that he's gaining more black male votes and brown votes from males, right? Um, that guy from Rhode Island, the BLM leader from Rhode yep. Island, is supporting Donald Trump. Um, so people are starting to wake up to the <laughs> nonsense, right? Yeah. Um, which is interesting to me. I'm hoping oh, yeah. that enough people wake up so when we have these primaries coming up in March, a lot of these yahoos that are pushing these policies go out the door because that's what we they need to leave, right? And whether it's yeah. A Democrat or Republican, we need new blood in the system um, instead of the same old, same old right. um, running for office and winning. Right? And that's what I think you're going to see with all these people, these not these ones that aren't running again. I think you're going to see new blood coming in. And when this new blood comes in, because everybody, when you first get there, wants to do something. Right. After about five or six different terms, they're just there for the damn money. Right. And the new ones in there, let's change it. And I, like I said, I thought, I thought I read like 20. I mean, you know, you got this guy, Ted Budd, and he's a Republican, but he's a turd. And then he said, oh, I'm not running this year. So I guess he figures he can be a turd while he's in there now. Right. You know, and not, <clears throat> not look at things because he'll be out of there. Yeah. I, I mean, and we got to have a different approach to everything, I think. Um, you know, I, I think that Republicans need to focus, you know, the Republican Party was built on individuality, right? Having individual rights. People have their own opinions about things. Yeah. Um, and we kind of gotten away from that when we're, when we're running campaigns, right? Because if you don't stick to the, you know, the, the Christian mentality and do things this way, the people, good old boy. people right. poo poo you, right? Um, kind of abortion, you know, abortion is legal in California. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. It really doesn't matter. Right. My personal feelings right. do not matter. It's the law Same here. It's, it's the law. So right. It, for us to, to garner those people to our side. Hey, I understand that it's the law, you know, and I understand you want to have an abortion, but 
we can help you if you carry that child a term, right? And find an adoptive family that'll take your child, right? Don't destroy the child, right? And give somebody an option to, to make a decision instead of, hey, you can have an abortion, right? Or you can get the, the you can buy that pill, what plan right. B, right? And take the pill. But we don't give people the options. After pill. It's just in California, just fucking do it, right? And and the Republican Party is don't do it, period. Well, I agree with don't do it, period. But the Republican Party was built under under circumstances. So if you gave that that person yeah, I mean, the option, you got I gave you, you the gotta, option to have an abortion, and I should I'll feel okay if you say, you know what, Tony, thank you, but I'm gonna have an abortion anyway. Okay, I did my due diligence, try to convince you or, or give you another avenue instead of straight abortion. And I think if we did that, right. we could garnish more people on our side instead of trying to force them into something that they don't right. So that's just my two cents on it. Well, you get the younger people, that were, it's our right to do it. Well, it's it's also the child's right too. But, you know, like right. you say, you give them the option and you give it to them early. And right. if, you know, somebody... Somebody goes out and has a one night stand and gets knocked up. To, you know, if you if you feel something happened, take the morning after pill. You don't right. have to worry about it, and it's done. It, the it, baby's not viable, uh, you know, and everything else. It, it it's, and you hit it on the head. It's just talking to people about choices instead of dictating choices, right? Because I don't want you know I might right agree with you, but I don't want you to dictate to me what you want me to do, right? I just don't, right? I don't care who you are. I'm not a big fan of, and believe me, I spent 26 years in the army and there was a lot of do as I say, not a big fan of that shit, right? I'm just not, right. um, but the, we need to find ways of having conversations. out here is once Great, Mike. Yeah, the governor out here wants to have a uh, action meeting. For, for women to say, you know, look, if, if, you, if you think this is going to happen, there's contraception out there. We can help right. you with that. And, and you know, and, and you again, have, that's a choice. And now I'm not a big fan of his. But if that's something that comes up and it, it's a possibility, I, I'm good with that. I'm okay with that. No, we need to do what we can to assist people through their problems, right? Or through through some tragedy, we just, we kind of just kind of make it whatever. No, let's talk to people and say, what are your concerns? Why do you want to have an abortion, right? We don't know what's going on in that person's mind. We just don't. We, we just can't say, hey, go have an abortion nilly willy. Right. That, that's not right. That's not right. We need to make sure that we spend time talking to people um, and finding out really what their dominant buying motive is. Right? Why do you want to have an abortion? Let's talk, right? Maybe I can talk you out of it right, by talking to you, right? Instead of me saying, you're a horrible human being for having an abortion. The minute you start doing that, people shut down, right? The minute you start- They push back. Things, yep. You know, people say, eh, you know what? You're all alike. All you Republicans are all old dinosaur people that don't understand life, right? Um, again, I don't have to agree with it. I don't agree with a lot of laws that we have in the books, right? Because we don't need them. We have the Constitution, right. right? I don't agree with with public unions, right, in any government job. We don't need them. We have laws in the books to protect employees. So we need to just get over ourselves and, and deal. You know, things change, right? It's not the 60s anymore. It's not the 70s. It's not the 80s when I grew up, right? Things change as time goes on. And we have to adjust fire with the new generation. And, and again, right. they don't like, you know, they're me, me, me kind of people, they're feelings kind of people. So we have to figure out a ways of, of, of accomplishing the mission that we want to accomplish, but the right way, right? Without sounding like a dictator or making somebody feel like they're not normal because they don't agree with us. Kind of like the left does with us, right? The left loves to torture us and po poison us, right? That we're no good, we're baby killer, no, oh, yeah. we are bigots, racists, 
we hate LGBTQT. We hate transgenders, right? None of that is true, but that's what they use to, to poison the people, right? And we help them because we right. react to that kind of nonsense instead of being proactive and saying, hey, Susan, why do you want to have an abortion? Maybe I can help you help yourself and help that child be born. You know, here are some things that I can do for you. Right. Because right. it's just a common sense approach. You know, there's families out there. There's families out there that are maybe, you know, the, the, and they say, okay, I want to have, we want to have a child. Hey, right. well, if you go full term, these people can help you out or these people will take care of that, you know, and, you know, there, there, there's all kinds of alternatives. And, you know, and I, they, I'm pretty they end up having, If they end up having a lot of kids, they end up having I'm, a lot of kids, what's that do? Right. That's another tax write off. And, and and I'm pretty confident that if you sit down with people and give them choices, a lot of the nonsense will end, right? I, I think it really will because I think people are just tired of not being talked to and listened to. They they feel like it doesn't matter what I do or say, it's still going to go wrong or it's still I still have to do this, right? There, there's no right. I, there's no human approach to life anymore from our elected officials. They don't think about different avenues. Everybody just wants to side with a particular group, and that's it. So, right. it, 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 oh it's, yeah, I mean, you see that when you and uh, when the yeah. House votes, it's the Democrats all go on one side, and the Republicans all go on another. Nobody wants to cross the aisle and and, and work with somebody, and you got to have that. You know, I think we, we elect public officials so that they could take care of us, right? I elect the mayor of L.A. so she takes care of Los right. Angeles, right? We elect city council people so they take care of that particular district, right? We, we elect congressmen assembly. They owe it to us, but we don't hold them accountable because we glorify who they are, right? We really glorify them. Not you and I specific, but as a, as as a people, we do right. Oh my God, here comes Senator Portentino. Well, right. he's an asshole, but he's a senator, so we get we got an almighty senator, right? Kind of attitude, and that's wrong. If they're not doing their jobs, we need to hold them accountable. Yep. Plain and simple. If if you're not doing your job, yeah, the, question, my district, the, my, the question should be: What have they done? For yeah. Don't come, don't yeah, come the to my question Veterans Day Parade. What have they done for us? Don't come to my Veterans Day Parade with your fucking suit and your nails painted black acting like you give a shit about veterans when you don't, right? I, I, I hate that, the fact that people do that. Right. Or, or certain politician, certain white politician bringing her African-American child to every, every, every neighborhood meeting why would you bring a child to a neighborhood meeting? This is strictly business. I know why she brings the baby because she wants everybody to know she adopted an African American oh. baby. The only reason, right? Optics, because, right? People, yep. people don't bring their kids to that kind of stuff. It just, it just doesn't happen. But certain people do. Um, but again, that should be a red flag for people out there that when they see that. Okay, wait a minute. This person's using this for that, or. You know, everybody in my neighborhood, and that's and that's what I thought because we we have an open Senate seat out here that's coming, and right. one of the bills that's running for it, the first things out of her mouth was, "Well, we need a black female in the Senate," and automatically <laughs> that turned me off because I want you to, you know, you 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 run my county right now, and you're just destroying it. And I, there was another gentleman who just jumped in the race on the Republican side. He was the B Andrews Air Force Base commander. Huh. So I moral backing and he's got some leadership skills and that's what I would like to see. I mean, I don't even know the guy. I don't know his platforms, but I know a little about him because of his history. Hey, and, and that's the crazy part that 
we get so caught up on, on, on choosing people for the color of their skin or their sexuality, we don't think about yeah. can they do the job, number one. Is that the best person right. for the job, right? Um, we have a city council member, you know, predominantly Hispanic district that I live in, right? Monica Rodriguez, right? I don't care who runs against her. They're better than her, right? She is a waste of freaking sperm. Oh, right. Right? She should not be in office, but she keeps getting elected. A lot of it is because the Hispanic community likes her because of her name. And, and, and I sort of understand that. But is she the best person for the job? No, absolutely not. When she ran against, I think there was 33 right. people ran against her. She still won, even though she's corrupt, right? uh, allegedly corrupt, excuse me, allegedly corrupt. She, she, she controls everything and she has aspirations. She wants to be a mayor someday, maybe governor someday, right? And, but she's like Newsom, right? They look pretty, they look presentable, they talk, they give a good speech, but they're worthless human beings, right? Because they truly don't care about their constituents. Right. right? And that's the problem. So oh, that definitely is a problem. I, I want to talk about Trump in Colorado. I mean, Mike, he, right. Go ahead, Mike. I said, my, said my representative out here. here, Stanny Hoyer, we only see Stanny Hoyer at election time or if they're going to open a new train station or something. And that's about it. The House leader leadership and he stepped down when Nancy stepped down he's like 83 years old he, he should have been gone to do and hopefully he will yeah. who's going to fill his shoes another another guy who was uh in was appointed or elected senator for the state who doesn't think about a lot of things he used to be the sheriff out here but he don't he doesn't yeah. think about a lot of things they got all these gun restrictions and I had to, I had to send him a letter and say, "Gee, just think, if you have this gun restriction, you can't do it either." Yeah. Because you're putting this, you're not putting exemptions in there. Well, it, it, yeah. What it all boils down to is this: at some point, everybody has to come to an agreement that there has to be term limits. There has to be. Right. We can't have people running. Kind of like Schiff, he was a congressperson, now he wants to run for Senate so he can spend more time in government. There's got to be a point where you can say, no, you can't run again. You know, we can do it for presidents, right? After two terms, you can't run. But everything else, they can jump around for other elections. Right. That, that should not be allowed. And I know that's a constitutional issue um, that has to be dealt with. But, you know, the American people could just stand up and say enough is enough. We, we don't... I don't want somebody there for 30 years. Right? There's no reason for somebody to be, well, there is a reason for them to be there for 30 years because they make a lot of money. But there's no reason, if they haven't done some of the things they promised us, they need to go. They need to just go. We don't need them. We don't need them. Yeah, they need to we've, be got a, we've got a new, no we got a new nominee for the uh, Social Security Administrator. <laughs> and his name is Martin O'Malley. Well, Martin State, and he wanted to give every, everybody a rain tax. And I uh, want this guy running Social Security? <clears throat> Screw it. Done. Yeah. Put a fork in you. <laughs> I want to touch on, on a few things about Trump. Yeah, yeah. So what's um, You know, Colorado, the Colorado trial um, is ended. We're waiting for a decision now from the judge. I. Um, that's probably going to happen sometime at the end of the month, um, December. What do you think? Well, this was the one that was passed from, I guess it's up at the Supreme Court now in, there, in Colorado. Right. Where she said, yes, mm -hmm. you committed this violation, and but no, you were a sitting president, and you're excluded from that part of the, uh, the 14th Amendment. Insurrection type. And I... Right. I was like, well, she said that, but I was like, well, he has never been charged with it. He's never had anything else. So I think she, she made a, not the best call, but a 
better logical call, and now it'll go up to the Supreme Court, and I got a feeling, hopefully, they're going to say the same thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to say the same thing. Because, um, look, it's just nonsense, right? This is just more more of a smear campaign um, about Donald Trump. And again, you know I'm not sure. a big Donald Trump fan, but what they're doing is wrong. It's it's totally wrong. And and, and truthfully, all they're yeah. doing is, is making the base even stronger for Trump. I don't know why they think that it's going to weaken Trump. It, oh, yeah. It just makes them stronger every time they do dumb crap like they're doing now. Every, every time we got indicted, his numbers all went up. Yeah, you know, and and yeah. now in New York, they brought the Deutsche, the Deutsche Bank in to testify that yes, he got loans from us. Yes, he paid them back. So you know, you're going to charge somebody with fraud when you don't have a victim. How do you do that? It's 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 the fear of of Donald Trump is I in my lifetime I've never seen so many people in political positions afraid of no. one person um, so much that they, right. they're going to extremes um, to try to get them in trouble. Here's another extreme, and I don't know if you heard this. The DOJ has subpoenaed um, Twitter or X's records on anyone who liked or retweeted any of Trump postings during October uh 2020 and 2021. Um, anybody that retweeted yeah. his posting. Wonder if they, they might be calling well, me in, I guess. Well, there's a lot of people that are going to be calling in. Right? <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, doesn't that violate some kind of federal law? Privacy? Yeah, that First Amendment. I, I mean, so you like this, yeah. or you click like for his postings, and now the DOJ is going to investigate you. This is how far we've gone. Oh, bring it on. This is how far we've gone in in our country in the last two and a half years with Biden in the White House. That now the DOJ is going to oh, Twitter. Yeah. And then, yeah, they, they actually got fined because Elon didn't want to release anything initially. Um, they got, I think, a $300,000 fine or something right. to that effect um, because he wouldn't release the records. Um, so we're going so far as to if you like a post, right, uh, you're going to be in trouble by the DOJ because you like a post, right? Which is freaking amazing to me. Yeah, they are. Yep. You Worry know, about shit that's important. Not this, work instead of this. Not yep. this nonsense that they worry about. So it, it, just a lot of things that go on that I, I just sit there and go, People wake up, pay attention to what's happening. You can't, you can't, the DOJ oh, yeah. has no business in doing that, right? They have no business in doing that. Um, you should be afraid that the DOJ can do that. That if you like a post, you're going to go to jail, right? That's ridiculous, right? Um, and that's, yeah. the, they want to, and not that they'll put you in jail, they just want to instill that fear in you. Hey, you like this postings, I'm going to mess with you now, right? Kind of attitude. Yeah. And then I saw a man on the street type thing today with Camilla Harris and they had the people in New York going, how do you think she's doing? Oh, she's doing a wonderful job. And all these people were saying that. And then the reporter goes back to him and goes, tell me what she's done wonderful at. Uh, I, I can't think of it right now. And that's what all these answers were. And I'm like, you know, you got to wake up people. You mind, you got to open your eyes. You got to see what's going on around you. People need people definitely need to wake up um, and, and see what's really happening. And if they, and I'm not I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything like that. But if you can't see that the government is trying to take over every aspect of our lives, then you're blind. Right? You're totally blind. Yeah. Because they're trying to take advantage of everything they can to keep us suppressed. Right. Like nobody's talking too much about the the new outbreak in China right now, right? Right. I'm pretty sure oh, that yeah, come the, March the and April. Yeah. Right. I'm pretty sure come March or April, 
I can foresee some lockdowns coming down, right? Because they're going to say that this other virus. Well, of course, it's election time, right? And and, and it's funny, another virus. Yeah, out of China last time. Out of China, hmm. Right, right. Um, but you don't hear about it. You don't hear about it right now. But it's happening. People are getting quarantined I hear, in China. I hear they're about it. Mandatory mask again. Yeah. I hear about it through like Epic News and stuff like this and a few others that, that may report it. And I'm like, okay. I said, of course, it's election time. And now yep. they're going to try to pull this shit again because they want the weak people in there. Yep. And, and it ain't going to happen. People need to see through that nonsense, though. I mean, people need to see through that nonsense. Um as you know, I'm running for California Assembly, District 44, um, which includes Burbank, Glendale, La Crescenta, Montrose, uh, Sullen, Tahunga, Valley Village, Shadow Hills, um, Toluca Lake area. Um, and, and I'm running on the campaign about parental rights. Um, and I think that's something that is critical uh, for the kids mainly, right? Um, and parents to hold parents accountable um, and also school choice. And, and I know my plan doesn't solve the problem with our schools. Um, you know, school choice to me is critical to parents. And I know it's not going to resolve the issue in the public school system. We have to resolve that at some point. Um, what I propose is a Band-Aid at this point, right? Giving parents the option right. to, to send their kids wherever they want. Um while we figure out what's wrong with the public school system. I have my, I have my own personal opinion on what's wrong with the school system. Um, and in my opinion, it's the unions that run the schools, right? I think for the most part, most teachers want to do a good job. They want to really teach kids, but that the union is the so. one that's forcing the nonsense into our schools. And they're the ones that are making money and giving it to politicians to get elected. Um, and, and I think that's the problem with the school system is that we've allowed the unions to dictate what the kids are, th are taught and the unions dictate the teachers, right? Um, I heard an outrageous number um, of salary for administrative people in the school districts. Some of them are making $200,000, $300,000, and yet school teachers that are on the ground wow. – Fighting the battle every day are making seventy to eighty thousand dollars a year, right? You know, we need yeah. to stop paying administrators all this. Go ahead, Mike. I think we get rid of the Department of Education, and we allocate the money that we were given to them to each state. You know, with the depending on their population, and we let the states take care of their own schools. And you get rid of some of that money hungry stuff that the unions are doing. It'll almost be like union busting. Yeah. Well, and you kind of break it up. I, 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 again, I, I know sometimes people think I'm not totally against unions. If it's a private company, then yeah, you can have a union. If it's the auto industry, trucking, yeah, have your own unions. But when it's government business, right. I don't think there should be any unions in government jobs. They should not be. Um, yeah, I mean, and it, I mean, our and police if there is, union, if have, go ahead. Our, yep, in our police, our police union, they're the only thing that we do is take care of our members. And when it comes time for arbitration, for maybe getting some little salary raises or benefits instead of having them lowered, right? They take care of that, and that's about it. And, and that's a good union. That's a good union. And, and I understand That's there a was a union. place for unions back in the day, right? Because there wasn't any employee laws right. to protect the employee. But, and, and I use the school system because I know LAUSD is driven by the UTLA, right? They make all the decisions. It's like trying to blame a police officer in LAPD for not doing his job when he's not the one that's not making the decisions. He's got that chief that's being manipulated right. And they're being told what to do in the field. Same thing with school teachers, right? Hey, teacher, if you don't teach right. this, you're probably going to lose your job. That's the intimidation factor, right? And, and we need to 
bring that to an end 